Domino's and TLC were two of the results from, from yesterday. Um, Domino's, if you remember, we were a little nervous about the result coming in um, just because the, uh, the earnings have been under real pressure in Japan specifically because um, the, the transition from the state of emergency to not being in a state of emergency caused real uh, difficulties with them in terms of their customer demand. Um, as it turns out, the numbers did miss yesterday, as you can see from the, from the, uh, the chart here. Um, but it wasn't for the reason that we expected. Uh, Asia, yes, it was down, um, but earnings were absolutely in line with expectations. It was Europe um, that was disappointing. So at the group level, EBIT was 7% down. Um, and sales and margins were both weak in that European geography. In fact, um, earnings in Europe in the second half were down 30% year on year, which is really unheard of um, for, for Domino's. So the group level, same store sales growth, which you remember is usually between 3 and 6%, uh, was minus 0 0.3. Uh, now we'd expected plus 0.7, so below the target, but but not uh, not negative, and that was really all because of Europe. Um, and what happened in Europe is that they went too early on putting through higher prices. So clearly they saw the cost inflation coming through the various channels with soft commodities and, and energy and labor, um, and decided to go hard on increasing prices. Now, that led to real customer pushback, because this was very early after the invasion of Ukraine. And the customers in, in France and Germany in particular were not yet in the mindset to accept higher prices. Um, and so they really pushed back and there was a volume response from that, um, which, which I don't think uh, Domino's really expected. Um, on top of that, the losses in Denmark um, ballooned to $12 million, which we didn't um, expect to see. Uh, they hadn't disclosed the losses in Denmark before, but for such a small market to be losing $12 million seems like a lot. Um, so that was all pretty disappointing. Um, as I say, Asia was in line. Australia was actually slightly better. Australia did um, um, EBIT uh, ahead of our expectations and grew year on year. Um, and even the current trading numbers were minus 1.1% um, same source sales growth for the first seven weeks. So all pretty bad news. Um, but the shares were up yesterday, um, 7, 7.5%. 7 um, so what, what was going on? Um, I think the first thing is investors had a sense that this is the worst result you will ever see from Domino's. Um, the transition from COVID to not being in COVID anymore was much more problematic than anyone expected, particularly Domino's themselves. And really what was going on here is that the tailwinds from COVID, because people were locked at home and, and ordering pizza, uh, they'd underestimated how strong those tailwinds were and just really thought that they'd done a, a really good job over that period of time of keeping the growth going. Um, so when that demand started to normalize, it took them by surprise. Um, and this is what you've seen in this result. So why does it get better from here? Well, clearly the comps get an awful lot easier. Um, once you cycle the 1st of October, which is when Japan came out of the state of emergency, um, the comps go negative um, in Japan. And so you have a much easier number to cycle and you will see positive growth. So as Don said yesterday, by the AGM, you will see positive same store sales growth. By the first half, same store sales growth will be even more positive. And the full year, they're confident that they will be within that 3 to 6% range. Now, they never give guidance on a one-year basis. So it was unusually confident for them to say that. Um, the other thing that went on yesterday is they announced the acquisition of um, three new geographies. Um, now, obviously, we've been expecting them to do something in the way of M&A. We didn't necessarily expect, expect Malaysia, Singapore, and Cambodia. Um, but there you go. Um, 287 new stores, um, which have been brought into the fold. Um, they think those markets have the potential for 600 stores all up. So that's led them to increase their long-term target. By 2033, they expect to have 7,250 stores minimum. Now, that is more than twice the number that they have today. Um, so you can see that the ambition for long-term rollout is is absolutely undiminished and is only getting uh, more and more aggressive. Um, also, I think you'll see that when consumers have normalized from the COVID tailwinds, you will see that they're resilient. Um, people in Australia are paying much higher prices um, for pizza. Um, the, the cheeseburger pizza, which I'm sure you've all tried, um, we certainly did in research yesterday, um, and it's awesome, um, that, that pizza is, is um, priced at $18.50. And people are 
buying it um, as if it's going out of style. In fact, it is going out of style because they ran out of ingredients over the weekend. That's how popular it was in Australia. So um, Australian consumers are accepting higher prices. Now, the European consumer, having gone too hard on price and having to roll back on it, they're now putting that back in because the European consumer is now um, in a mindset to accept higher prices because everything's more expensive in Europe, um, particularly energy um, and and groceries. Um, So that is coming through. At the same time, some of the input costs are coming off the top. So wheat prices are down a lot. Cheese prices, who knew mozzarella prices are down a lot. Um, These things are going to provide really welcome relief. What you're not going to see is Domino's wind back those prices aggressively. So having got the consumer to a higher price point, the input costs are starting to come down. You will see that margins will improve in in, uh, in FY23. Um, So this is the most efficient um, pizza company in the world. Um, it is definitely worth your attention because of the long-term growth. Um, it's been emotional um, over the last uh, year or so, um, but it does get better from here. This is the worst result you'll see from Domino's. Um, on to TLC, um, and hopefully if you see my note title, you'll understand um, what I'm getting at. Um, but when we initiated coverage on, on TLC a, a few weeks ago, um, after the demerger with Tabcorp, we, we said that this is a business that's going to deliver you solid earnings and solid cash flows. And you can see from the chart here, that's exactly what they did um, right in the uh, in the middle of that target. Um, and they've demonstrated that this is what the business is able to achieve, that infrastructure-like cash flow generation, really predict- predictable growth. What they did in FY23 was 9% revenue growth. That was all driven by the lottery business, which was up 10%. Um, and a very, very strong performance um, out of Powerball in particular. You'll remember the $120 million Powerball back in um, back in February. Uh, it was tremendous for them. Um, Kino was flat, uh, slightly down actually, but of course, all of the New South Wales um, uh, clubs were shut during lockdown and Kino is, is particularly popular in New South Wales. Um, so that uh, caused them a bit of a... Um, um, negative pressure, but they made up for it by digital uh, penetration of Kino going up to almost 20%, um, which is really promising because as we come into FY23, they've recently signed up um, a license to do Kino in Victoria, um, and that is going to be a digital market for them. Um, so you will see good growth coming out of Kino in FY23. Um, so what to expect in FY23 apart from that? It is going to be more of the same. You won't see quite the same level of growth in lotteries as you did in 22. Um, They were unusually lucky with the jackpots, um, but you will see positive growth. And that will be complemented by um, the recent refresh for the Oz Lotto game. Um, And also, um, it looks as if they're going to refresh the Wednesday, Monday and Wednesday Lotto as well. Um, So these things historically have um, a good uptick in terms of consumer demand. Um, So good growth to come. You'll also see them look to diversify their retail networks, so fewer news agents and more places like pharmacies and and, um, and, and petrol stations. So there is no excuse um, for not buying that lottery ticket. Um, You'll also see them pay their first dividend um, in the first half of of FY23, which we think is going to be very generous. Uh, We've got a 90% payout ratio. And this is what this business will do over the next few months, years, um, decades maybe. It will generate a lot of cash and it will give it back to you as a shareholder. Um, That may come as capital management in due course. Um, They will pay down their debt, and their debt is elevated at the moment because they took all of Tabcorp's debt, and they've got three times net debt to EBITDA. That burns off incredibly quickly. Um, And to keep that uh, ratio at a a reasonably steady level, you could see them do a buyback um, or some sort of capital return in in the future. So if your clients are after income um, or the potential for capital return, this is the company for you. Um, And remember, this business has licenses which are very long duration, on average 21 years for for lottery um, and 29 years for um, for Kino. Um, They've got a a very, very extensive retail network of more than 4,000 venues. Um, These guys are absolutely bulletproof. Um, It's not cheap, but this is a very high quality business.